So Mike's going to be talking to us about um, our resumes and just a personal um, tidbit. Uh, some of the best advice I ever got was to make sure that my resume is always ready um, because you never know when your dream role will present itself and you don't want to be scrambling trying to put together your resume um, and let a week or two or a month go by um, trying to give your resume over. So anyways, I'm going to turn it over to you, Mike. Feel free. There you go. And feel free to present yourself and slides or whatever else you would like to talk about. So um, as I said, uh, Advanced Business Engineering, it's my company. Uh, I'm an IT recruiter. I've got uh, over 20 years of experience recruiting. Been doing a lot of security and cybersecurity recruiting um, the last couple of years. Uh, as I said, I'm a beekeeper. This is the current state of my backyard with all of my hives. And Thursday afternoon, uh, some of my hives swarmed. Um, a couple thousand bees that I had to put up in a box and catch, and I guess one of them was still mad at me last night uh, when I was in the backyard and decided to sting me between the eyes. So I woke up this morning with my face pretty swollen and my uh, family picking on me pretty good. Um, so resume highlights, and Yvette, you made a couple of good points this morning that I was going to get to. Um, and one of them is you need to work on keeping your resume updated. I recommend people do it at once every six months or once a year. Uh, I've talked to a number of people that have been caught in layoffs. They hadn't touched their resume in a couple of years and they find it a daunting task to have to go back and figure out the various jobs that they might've been promoted from and up through. And they find it a daunting job to go back and remember what tasks they had to do. It also allows you that if you are caught in a situation like Yvette talked about this morning in her keynote, if you are caught in a surprising layoff, it allows you to pivot rather quickly with your resume, or if a new opportunity comes to you out of surprise, it allows you to get your resume over to someone rather quickly. Uh, so to Yvette's points, absolutely keeping your resume updated uh, is something that I recommend. So resume formatting, um, on the internet, a lot of F-style reading has been talked about, and that's what a lot of people do with their resume. Uh, and it is a good way to format your resume. You can look up F-style formatting or reading formatting if you want to see what that's like. So you need to use clear headings and subheadings that are bolded. I recommend objective, uh, experience, education, skills, uh, and, and bold those, highlight those, so re resume readers know exactly where to go and find that information. Bullet points are an easy format. They allow people to read uh, very clearly and easily on all devices. We are all looking at uh, resumes and everything on all devices now. So sometimes when people are tired, if it's paragraph formatted, uh, it's just really hard to read on a smaller device. Um, straight to the point writing, cut any kind of unnecessary clutter that bogs a reader down. I think we all have been reading something and when you get to the end of a sentence or halfway through a paragraph, you don't understand what you've read and you have to go back and reread something or start over to see what somebody was saying. So you need to make sure that you don't have any kind of clutter or, or writing that's going to bog somebody down. They say you have about 30 seconds to grab someone's attention. Uh, hiring managers that I talk to, they need to hire, they know they need to hire, but it's something that they don't enjoy doing. Uh, so if a manager is frustrated with your resume, if it's not making sense to them, they will pass on it and they will, will move on to the next person. Uh, name, phone number, email address, city and state, zip code. You do not need to put your physical address anymore and it'll also help you save some space. I recommend that you put an objective uh, on your resume, one to three sentences about the type of opportunity that you're seeking. Uh, this does help if your resume is separated from a cover letter and if you're going into an applicant tracking system, most likely you can count on the fact that your cover letter will be separated from your resume. Uh, and then that way, if it's pulled up internally later, someone can see what kind of a opportunity or objective that you're after. I do recommend that everybody write a cover letter. I do recommend that you write a cover letter to every single opportunity, and you can't be lazy about it. I get people that will send me a resume with a cover letter, and they've left the cover letter written to an opportunity that they were applying to previous to me. If you do that, 
to HR or if you do that to a hiring manager, it just looks lazy and it is a very quick turnoff. Um, it just doesn't say much about your follow through and your uh, attention to detail. Uh, and I think in security, you need to be attention to detail oriented. And so you need to make sure that you are writing uh, a cover letter for everyone and make sure that you're doing it correctly. Uh, a skill section. This can be very important for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, you can uh, highlight specific skills, hardware, software, tools that you want to bring attention to. It can also act uh, as a keyword database if your resume gets uploaded into an applicant tracking system uh, or onto Dice or anywhere, you know, uh, Indeed, Monster. So that can also act as a, uh, a keyword uh, search bank. Experience. Um, you need to clearly lay out uh, each job that you've had. You need to put your employer's name unless you need to keep that confidential, which I understand that happens sometimes. You need to put your title. You need to clearly lay, uh, label your dates of employment. You need to give meaningful content and an explanation of your job responsibilities. And uh, again, as something that Yvette talked to this morning, you only list skills and experience that you can speak to in an interview. Uh, I had a gentleman who must have put every single piece of security hardware tool uh, and software that they ran in his organization. A manager started asking questions he could not answer to half of them. It really turned the interview negative on both sides because he felt like he wasn't doing well. Uh, so please represent yourself as you are. Uh, that way you just, you can answer those questions. Um, you need to have RAQs in your experience. And what are RAQs? One is uh, R is responsibilities. What were your day to day? What were your month to month? And what were your annual responsibilities? Actions, you need to give action to what you did to carry out those responsibilities. And Q is quantification. And this might be percentages or numbers that give actions to something that you did measurable could be the number of servers that you're responsible for, the number of endpoints that were protected, systems upgraded, performance uh, increase. Uh, if you're a manager or moving up, you might have budget responsibility, the team size manage. Quantification just gives numbers that people can sink their teeth into. Education, obviously you need to list your uh, college or university and the de degree obtained. Do not put uh, graduation dates. Uh, you don't want to allow someone to aid you. It does happen. It's really hard to get it out of your mind. Even for me, when I try and walk away from it, sometimes you know younger managers want younger people on their team. Uh, but when you see a date of graduation, sometimes it's really hard. But uh, you do not need to give someone the ability to aid you. So no graduation dates on there. Uh, I'm also old school. Like I said, I've been doing this over 20 years. I only like to see a college and degree listed when you've obtained it. I'm not a fan of putting university on there because you took just some classes. That has gotten me in trouble before. It was my fault. I forgot to ask somebody on their resume if they did finish their college education. It came back on the employment check that the person did not um, finish their college education. And then I had to do a lot of explaining, jumping around. We were able to secure the job for the person but uh, it was a lot of explaining to do why it looked like he had a college education and he didn't. So I'm just, I'm a fan of not putting it if you don't have it. Uh, certifications, obviously in security, all of your certifications uh, that you have need to be listed um, and the ones that are relevant to you. Some of the ones people don't put on there that you know, have expired or they don't wanna keep up anymore, that's obviously okay. Uh, but if there is one that maybe you held in the past that might be relevant uh, to a job that you're trying to get now, you can put that on there in my opinion. I, I think it does help show that you've jumped through that hoop in the past. Spell check your resume. I leave spell check on on my Word docs. And so when a resume comes over to me and there are a ton of red lines underneath words, um, obviously it doesn't catch all, spell check doesn't catch certain software and hardware and stuff like that, and that's understandable. But when it's throughout the resume and other places, it's a pretty quick turnoff. A lot of the people that I work with in HR, it's a really big turnoff for them. 
Uh, grammar check your resume, whether you put it in Grammarly or whatever, you need to be reading your resume. I say read, reread, and reread your resume for grammar uh, and ease of reading. Uh, again, you have less than 30 seconds to catch someone's attention. So if it doesn't flow, they will move on. Um, after you're done and you feel like you're pretty secure with your resume and happy with it, have your spouse or your girlfriend or your boyfriend, your friend, your mom, your dad, somebody that was willing to read the resume, have them read it, be willing to take their criticism to heart and make the corrections that they suggest. Uh, a lot of times we get really attached to our work and, and we take criticism to you know, really hard, but I think that other people's opinions would really, really, really help. Uh, again, a lot of people stress about their resume, and I don't think it's something you have to stress about. I say just make it a work in progress. Work on it a little bit each day. Uh, again, I talked to some people that have been laid off. They've been in a company for 15 years or 20 years, and it is a really daunting task to have to redo a resume. Uh, so if you can keep it updated once or twice a year, uh, it really does help and it's not such a, a daunting task and it really will help you pivot to a new opportunity if someone comes to you with one or if you're laid off. Length of resume is something that's pretty subjective to a lot of different people. A lot of managers don't like long resumes. They don't have the time to read them. So if you have less than three years of work experience, uh, maybe three to five, you probably should keep your resume to one page. If you have more than three or five years of experience, you can go to two pages in length. I don't get offended if I see a three page resume. I'm okay if that person has had multiple contracts or has gone through multiple opportunities uh, or maybe someone who is a senior level manager uh, and needs to show that progression of job experience. Uh, I can see it going to three pages. I don't really see any reason why someone needs to go past three pages. Uh, it's just too long and people don't want to read that much. So if you're looking for an internship uh, and you don't have a lot of uh, experience, a lot of people say, you know, they, they just don't have work experience. What should someone list and how should they do it? I recently helped a friend of mine's son who uh, all he'd ever done is work in an insurance uh, firm as a clerk. Uh, he was a developer. He was coming out. He was graduating from Kennesaw. We put the, uh, the insurance clerking on the bottom then we moved his uh, project experience up and we made his resume extremely heavy on the development projects uh, and courses that he took uh, at KSU and that helped him secure an internship. And then once we did that, we were able to expand on the internship and, and put a lot of experience uh, and depth around that and that helped him move into a new position which he secured by the time he was already done with his internship to a new company. Um, so I would draw attention to any kind of applicable courses that you have um, worked on or programmed in or done in security. If you run a home lab, I would put that on there, whether you are a professional or not, that gives you some extra depth outside of work uh, that shows that you do other things uh, outside of work or it shows tools that you've worked with or projects that you've done. A lot of managers like seeing if you've got home lab stuff on there side projects that you've worked on. So moving over to LinkedIn, since that kind of goes obviously with a resume, um, and, and one of the things that a, a resume and your LinkedIn profile should do is they should complement each other. Uh, you don't want them to be the exact same. Uh, and again, I know another daunting task of taking your resume and changing it over and putting it on a LinkedIn profile uh, but you've got to think of your LinkedIn profile as a fishing hook that's in the water, constantly fishing. Uh, whether you're sleeping, whether you're at lunch, wherever you are, LinkedIn is out there fishing for that next opportunity for you. Uh, so your headline should be an industry standard job title. And what, by, what I mean by that is there are a lot of companies that will have specific job titles that are unique to the inside of that company. Uh, if I am searching on LinkedIn for a security engineer or a security analyst or a security architect, if you don't fall into that category, you are using a job title that's unique to your company, it is not going to help you be found on LinkedIn. Um, so you need to go out to say Indeed, you can do a search, come up with a job title that you can probably find 50 or more job titles or jobs of that job title 
and put that in uh, on your LinkedIn profile as your job title. That will help a lot. A tagline uh, is something, a little catchy description or catchy phrase that might help you stand out uh, from the masses. So you can imagine as I'm telling you to put security engineer or security analyst, if you do that, there's gonna be thousands of you, uh, of us here in the Atlanta area. So you might come up with a catchy phrase or a catchy description that says something about you or your skills or the opportunity you're looking for that might make someone want to click on your uh, profile and come in and you know, read a little bit about you. Your summary, this is your elevator pitch. This is where you're going to get on your soapbox and you are going to tell me about you. It is different, uh, LinkedIn is different from a resume. You are going to talk about yourself in the first, first person. You're gonna give me a summary of your skills and experience. You might go so far as to tell me what kind of opportunity you're looking for, if you're okay with your firm knowing, or if you're already out in the job market, you can certainly tell me what kind of opportunity you think uh, you might be interested in. You need to kind of catch my attention and link some accomplishments at the top in your summary, and you link those accomplishments back down um, to your experience. Uh, you can consider this building your brand. You are branding yourself as a you know, strong engineer or pen tester uh, or analyst or security architect. This is building your brand. So next I put certifications. And the reason why I did this is that if you did not know this, you can reorder your LinkedIn profile. Certifications uh, as it stands now come up on the end of your profile and you're hoping that someone is going to hang around long enough on your profile or stay interested long enough on your profile that they're gonna read all the way to the bottom. Uh, I like taking certifications and moving it up under summary uh, and before experience because this just really puts certifications right in someone's face and they know uh, a little bit more about you right there. Uh, education again, college, university, major, no dates. You do not wanna age date yourself. Uh, your experience, just like your resume, except that you want to talk about yourself in the first person. I was responsible for this. I installed that. I used XX tool to scan. Uh, just talk about yourself and share that level of experience with me. Skills and endorsements. The way that LinkedIn has changed things, you can have up to 50, but on your page without me clicking into more, I can only see your top three you can reorder and bring to the top your top three that I can see. And then if I wanna click on it, I can go into more, uh, but please put your top three skills uh, on your skills and endorsements. Endorsements don't mean much, but that's just the section um, that it, as it's called on LinkedIn. Um, I do recommend since you can have up to 50 skills, I do recommend trying to fill that up Skills is a section that is also a keyword section. And so if I want to search for someone by just keywords, um, this is a great place to heavy load your resume uh, with various keywords that I'm gonna use to find you. So I do absolutely recommend that you fill that up. References, uh, I recommend references two to three. You do not need more than two to three references. Uh, people are just not going to invest that amount of time, so don't bother a bunch of people. I also like making sure that they are from a previous manager or supervisor. We all know the people that we play golf with or play tennis with or go out and hang out with. We know our friends are going to give us good references, and you can easily read through that. So if you're going to take the time to put a reference out there, make sure it's a previous manager or supervisor or someone that you built, did a project with, someone that you uh, may have done some installations with or something that can speak to how you are working uh, with them as a partner or a peer. That's always uh, very important. Again, content is king. Uh, use phrases and keywords that you want to be found for. Uh, a lot of times I won't necessarily search by job title. I will search by keywords or phrases. Uh, so keeping that in mind, you might want to build your profile around those keywords and phrases that, that you would like to be found for. Um, always keep it just like your resume. If you're updating your resume, try and keep in mind, keep your LinkedIn profile updated. Um, again, think about your profile as a fishing hook in the water that is always fishing for a new opportunity, no matter what you are doing. Um, so make sure that you filled it out and, and put a little meat on the bone, so to speak, so that uh, people will know a little bit about you.
Um, word clouds, if you're familiar with the word cloud, I recommend running your resume and your LinkedIn profile through a word cloud. And what a word cloud will do, if you know anything about them, is that the word in the middle or the words in the middle that show up the largest, they're the ones that you're using the most throughout your resume or throughout your LinkedIn profile. They're the ones that you're using to describe yourself the most. Sometimes if you take a word cloud and you visually look at it, then you'll see the words that you're using over and over and over. Is that what you want to be representing about yourself? Is that representing correctly? So, you know, you might do that with your resume. I did it previously with just my summary on my LinkedIn profile, and then I did it overall with my LinkedIn profile and summary together. They kind of presented differently and separately, so I had to do some tweaking to make sure that it came across uh, the way that I wanted to. Uh, there is a link right there, ABC uh, uh, forward slash games forward slash words, and there's an underscore in there you can't see, but word slash underscore clouds. Uh, it's free go in and generate a couple word clouds and, and play around with it and see if you're, uh, if you're presenting yourself uh, as you like. So I know I went through that pretty fast. I didn't know, um, I didn't know how, how it would go. So if there's any questions, uh, maybe we could go over to Slack. This is me, um, my LinkedIn profile. You can send me an email. You can, uh, that's my website. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm more than happy to Take a look at some people's resumes, uh, since that's what I was going to be doing today at B-Sides. Uh, if anybody wants to email me or set up a time, we can talk. I can look at some resumes and uh, make some recommendations. I can also do the same thing for LinkedIn profiles if anybody wants to uh, take time to do that. Thanks, Mike. There's actually um, a lot of questions for you in um, Slack. Um, I have a quick question uh, before we let um, one of our sponsors talk in a couple of minutes. But um, when I was doing recruiting um, at PwC, um, one of the things I saw often from, you know, going to various um, colleges is people add their GPA on their resume. Um, that's not something I ever did, not because I didn't have a good GPA, I just, when I was writing my resume, I never did. So <laughs> um, I didn't know how important that was, um, adding to a resume for somebody coming out of college. Um, what do you think? I mean, I think personally it says something about you and your grades and your study habits. So I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, I mean, I, I've never had a manager say, you know, good or bad about it, but it certainly it could say something about you as a person uh, and your abilities. But I don't know. I don't, I don't put a lot of depth into it myself either, I guess I would say. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then let's see, just looking. Uh looking at a few questions. Uh, any tips for getting past the ATF? No, not really. <laughs> I mean, so you'll sometimes I see a lot of um, PDF resumes that come over with uh, a lot of formatting that's fancy. Certainly when you're going to an interview and you take your resume with you, I do think that you need to take your fancy formatted resume with you but they recommend that you have a text formatted resume that you submit to the ATSs. Uh, ATSs don't generally like uh, the, the pretty formatted uh, with the, the bars and sections and everything. They don't like them. So you probably ought to have a text version of your resume that you're going to submit to applicant tracking systems. Okay. Um, and then another really key question that I saw, I have lots of personal friends who have been out of the workforce for an extended period of time. Um, what, what advice would you give somebody like that? Uh, I think more than anything right now is, so for some people, what I say is, you know, there's some people that are pivoting, say, from a different type of IT and they want to pivot over into IT security. And what I tell people is, is you've got to use experience of where you were to build a bridge to where you want to go. Uh, so if you can take that kind of experience, and obviously we're talking about um, anything that you do, you've got to be able to talk to in an interview and, and it can't be lying or, or you know, stretch the <laughs> truth, but build, build on experience that you have on where you want to go and see if you can help bridge that gap. For, for those people that, and, and right now we're probably going to be facing that, people that have been out of the workforce, mm -hmm. 
I think the, the only thing that we can do is, is try and get out like we were going to do at B-Sides today. And you've got to network and you've got to get people's faces and you've got to network or see if you can find some people that will help network on your behalf for you uh, and see if that will help you. Very cool. All right. Well, um, if you can go into the Slack channel, um, there is probably 10 or 15 questions that sure. would love your attention. Okay. Um, and I'll let you just work on those while I, um, and we appreciate your time today. This has been really helpful. I actually wrote down several things from your talk that I'm going to go back and touch up on my LinkedIn profile, my resume. So uh, appreciate your time today. All right. Well, thanks for having me. And uh, yes, I'm on the Slack channel now. So I'll go out there and start answering some questions. All right. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a great day.